Hi, I'm Holly. I'm from Teach All About It and today we're going to be doing some daily practice for revision. Today we're going to be looking at an exam question and an example student answer for the IGCSE Computer Science Syllabus from Cambridge. So today's question actually has two parts. The first is a tick statement to see if we can work out which one of these applies. So we are looking at check sums, check digits, and also parity checks. Now with a check sum and um, check digit and also parity check, all of these are error checking methods. So for this one, just go through, pause the video and see if you can work out which ones apply. And do remember that some statements may apply more than once. Once you've done that, we will be going through a student answer. So the second part of this question is based on those five statements, can you identify one other error checking method? And if you are doing the IGCSE with Cambridge, there is only one other that they want you to be able to identify. So you can see there's actually quite a lot of uh, feedback written on this particular student's answer. And I'm just going to go through this. So on here, you can see that um, they have a correct answer on this row, correct answer on this row. Um, now, the check sum is an interesting one because it actually did have two different ones. Um, and I've got a little circle around this one because you could get away with either having a tick there or not having a tick there, which is a little bit um, a little bit strange. This here, parity check doesn't compare to calculated values. So a check sum is comparing two, whereas a check digit um, is also comparing two values, um, but a parity check simply is counting the number of ones. Um, so you can see here, this student got the four out of five, and what we're doing is we are marking per row. Um, so in this case, we are looking at each row in 10, and I would recommend that you do each thing. Um, so look at the statement and see if you think that it compares. Now, you might, for some of these, be able to work out um, the later ones based upon the earlier questions. But for this one, um, it was simply a case of going through each row in turn. Do look for hints in the description. So you can see here that there is that two calculated values to see if an error has occurred. Now we know that parity check only sends one value, so that's going to be a bit of a hint. And also um, something that will not detect transposition errors, transposition when you've moved it from one thing to another. Um, and then finally, um, some of the answers will be optional. So you can see this one where I have the arrow pointing to it just here. Um, this one was an optional answer. Um, if you had put a tick, you would have got the mark right. If you didn't put a tick, you would have got the mark right. But these are very, very few and far between. Now, the second part of this is um, identifying an error checking method. So the four that you're looking for here is parity. So if we just highlight these, so you, they've already given you checksum, they've given you check digit, they've given you parity, and the last one is ARC, which is A-R-Q, that is Automatic Repeat Requests. And here inside the feedback, they have been given a little bit um, of an example of A-R-Q, which is just here. So if you imagine here is computer number one, here is computer number two, and going down is time. So computer number one is going to send a message, and it's going to wait for essentially like a thank you. It's going to wait for the second computer to confirm that they have received it. Now, if they don't confirm that they've received it, that message will simply be sent again. And then once that thank you goes back, so that confirmation, message goes back to say that that, uh, that data packet has been received, then they will then move on to the next one. So it is automatically repeating sending that particular data packet until somebody says thank you.
So would you like your question featured on here? If you've been studying and you have a past paper question that you'd like me to answer and give some examiner style feedback, you can go to www.teachallaboutit.school and you can submit your GCSE, IGCSE or A-level computer science questions for free.